The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, my little bunny foo-foo. Yes. Um, this week on the Pope on Film podcast, we are discussing battles. Some of the most legendary cinematic battles known to mankind. Some serious one-on-one -on -one battles in the history of Hollywood. We're going to be talking about some of those. Uh, of course, Freddy versus Jason. Yes. Legendary letdown that was. <laughs> Alien, Alien versus Predator, which I hear is a movie that existed. <laughs> so, I, I have heard that oh, too. Uh, who could forget the knockdown drag out fight known as Kramer versus Kramer? Yes. That was another huge battle. Oh, and who could forget the legendary gory, gory, bloody film Elmo versus Grover? Oh, that was a good fight, though. That scared me. The blood. There was so much blood. <laughs> But I was happy to finally see Grover get some comeuppance because, you know, um, Grover was Elmo before Elmo was Elmo. Now That's Sesame correct. Street is just the Elmo show starring a bunch of other Muppets. And it's mm -hmm. sad. Kids it's... don't even know who Ernie and Bert are anymore. It's sad. It, it, it is very sad because I, I grew up. There was no Elmo for me. Yeah. Yeah. It was all about the Grover. Oh, yeah. Grover was the shit. Grover mm -hmm. was the freaking man. Mm -hmm. So, um, Maxwell, what are you doing awake? Go, go to the bathroom, baby. No. Go to the bathroom. No, 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 no. Are you sleepwalking? Go to the bathroom. No, hurry, run. If you need to go potty, then go potty, baby. I think Maxwell's sleepwalking. Ah. Oh. Every once in a while, he'll just wait. What, Maxwell? What are you doing, baby? What are you doing? Are you aware of what you're doing? It's it's nighttime. You need to get back to bed, baby. If you need to go potty, then go potty, okay? He doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, hi, Maxwell. Back. What's going on? Do you need to go potty? Come here. Come here. Come on here. It's okay, baby. It's okay. Did you have a nightmare? The robots aren't controlling us. All right, then. Batman v. Superman, which I know you loved, Bunny. I remember when we did that movie on the podcast, you just could not stop crying. I I, I could not stop crying, no. You Just I the whole not. time. But I also been... couldn't stop crying uh, over Ape, either, you know? Oh, A-P-E, Attack of the Giant Horny Gorilla. God, I love that movie. <laughs> So much. God, I love that movie. Let's see. Some other legendary battles. Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. And the much lesser known Universal Monster movie, The Battle of the Invisible Men. <laughs> it was actually just an empty room. And then occasionally you heard sound effects, you know, like. Oh! Ah! Yes. Oh! Oh! How you, how you like some of this? Oh! And stuff like that. It was just an empty room, though. I, I, I just had a strange, completely unrelated thought. Uh, it is a thought related to our last segment. Okay. What if we redo both Boys Beware and Girls Beware, okay? By just pulling the narration from the films, okay? And Boys Beware would then be a, an instructional guide for how pedophilias can actually find and seduce young boys. Like a handy how-to. Yes. For America's and, uh, pedophilias and priests. Yes, and how properly to go about a date rape. 
that's that might be brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. We just switch the sides for who this movie is for. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. But it still works. Yeah. Sorry. There... It, just, it just came in my head. I couldn't help it, and it had to go away. No, it's a good idea. It's got merit. <laughs> so continuing on with legendary one-on-one battles, or one-on-a-bunch, there's the Navy versus the Night Monster featuring Mamie Van Dorham. Yes. And who could forget the follow-up, the Army Reserves versus the Dusk Mummy featuring Ruth Buzzy. <laughs> Instead of the name V, it's the Army Reserves, and they can only fight the monster one weekend a month. Yes. <laughs> And instead of the night monster, this is the dusk mummy. So it's a mummy, but it only comes out during dusk. Yes. There's uh, the alleyway fight and they live. Yes. There's Rocky versus Apollo and Rocky and Rocky 2. There, who could forget the amazing battle of Schindler versus Hitler in Schindler's List? Uh-huh. Yes. That was an amazing fight. That was an incredible fight. But you had you knew how it was going to come out. Just look at the reach Liam Neeson has. Oh, you know? yeah. No. I, I, Hitler can't even, you know, Liam Neeson can punch Hitler five times before Hitler can get in close enough to land a blow. Yeah. He's got those short Hitler, little arms. Hitler, Hitler was a skinny guy, but he'll like, he'll crawl you, you know? Yeah. He'll crawl you. Yeah. You know, every everybody thinks that that Nazi salute is just a sign of hatred, but it was also it was also Hitler trying to lengthen his arms and get a better reach by just throwing yes. it out there forcefully like yes. that, hoping hoping to get an, an extra couple of inches. Yeah, but of course, when you're talking about famous one-on-one battles in cinematic history, what Bella? You have to talk about one of the most hyped, most beloved, and most batshit insane movies of all time, the 1962 Toho Confusion Fest, King Kong vs. Godzilla! Yes. Note that it's actually King Kong vs. Godzilla, not King Kong v. Godzilla, Uh because that would be fucking stupid. (laughs) I'm looking at you, DC Cinematic Universe. Uh Uh-huh. So, okay. So, first of all, despite what you may have heard, and this is very important, and I wanted to lead off with this, Despite what you may have heard, despite the rumors and the websites and the urban legends, wherever you may have read this, this movie only has one ending. (laughs) Really? Yes. I I have always heard of the two endings. Yeah, everybody has heard that. In fact, the Wikipedia page for this movie has uh, like the, the, the lengthy bit describing the urban legend surrounding the ending to this film is almost as long as the lengthy bit describing the plot. (laughs) But it is widely believed that in the American version that King Kong wins and that in the Japanese version, Godzilla wins. I had a kid's book, a series of kid's books from the 80s. They were a, a series of orange books Eleanor, Eleanor, you're making this sound very unprofessional, baby. Why you gotta drag? Why you gotta drag it down like that? What happened, Bella? What? He just wants mom. He won't tell me anything. He just wants mom. Okay. Wants mom. I think he started. I think he has started uh, sleepwalking. And then he just gets up and he doesn't know what's going on. Like he had a bad dream. And so now he's just wandering around the living room. I'm not sure what the deal is, but. He said he wanted to go home. He said he wanted to go home. Yeah, he no, he's. To go home. Yeah, he's he's sleepwalking. He's definitely sleepwalking. Yeah. Um, 
You need to go to bed, Bella. I don't know. Okay. So I had I had this series of kids books from the eighties. They were orange books, uh, old school. They were filled with um, the history and the description of old school monster movies. That, and you you could pretty much find them in every library in the eighties. They were the Crestwood House Monster series, but okay. they are more better known as the Orange Monster books. That's how everybody knows them. Yeah, I'm not familiar with these. Yeah, no, my school had most of them, and then when I grew up and looked on the internet, I realized, holy shit, everybody who grew up in the 80s had these in their library, apparently. Nice, so, I would have loved that. Yeah, no, it... it, it they were old. They they focused on old school characters, so it would be the history of Dracula the book, and then Dracula the series. I remember the the Dracula book ended with a look at um, uh, Kolchak the Night Stalker. Really nice. Yeah, but the book began with a fairly accurate kids book description of the plot of the original Bela Lugosi Dracula and it had pictures and it was it was really interesting and I saw the Dracula one first and I'm like oh do you have others and we had they had Dracula and Frankenstein and Frankenstein meets the Wolfman had one creature from the Black Lagoon had one Phantom of the Opera had one and there was a King Kong one and there was a Godzilla one and I believe if I'm not mistaken that both of those books both of them um, stated the false narrative that there were two different endings to this Godzilla film. Really? Yeah. They, they, yeah. Both books said that. I, I have, I have just always heard that. Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> Because there's there's no truth to that. Um, well, because it doesn't look like the, anybody actually wins. Yeah, no. Here is here is the truth to it. In the American and in the Japanese version, King Kong wins. However, it was feared that Japanese audiences would not be okay with having the American monster beat the Japanese monster, despite the fact that you also have to realize that um, this is only the third Godzilla film. I'm going to end up saying this over and over again. This is only the third Godzilla film, and at the time, uh, in Japan, King Kong was probably more popular than Godzilla. Uh Uh-huh. Because the only films that were out were uh, what uh, Godzilla and Godzilla Strikes Again, and that's it. And those were two kind of downers. King Kong had yeah. been around for a while, and everybody knew King Kong. King Kong was probably more popular at the time. It was this film that made Godzilla. But uh-huh. they still thought in Japan, like, I'm still not sure if, if people are going to 100% dig on the American monster beating the Japanese monster. So what they did is at the end of the movie, they added a Godzilla roar in post to keep the ending vague enough to warrant possibly more Godzilla movies. Again, remember, this is only the third Godzilla movie. Yeah. So, and now, even in the American version, if you're watching the American version of King Kong versus Godzilla, it, that vague roar at the end of the film pops up on occasion, leaving the ending vague. Like mm-hmm. the, in the in the original American version, it makes it it's it's quite it's quite obvious. Okay, King Kong won. He's swimming back to his island now, and Godzilla has been defeated. Yeah, the end. Bye, guys. It, it's pretty obvious. Okay, King Kong wins, but that roar adds a vagueness to it like oh wait is Godzilla still around I guess we'll never know who wins so that led legendary pictures who are busy world building with their Godzilla centered monster verse um, be sure and check out last week's episode of the Pope on Film if you yes. haven't yet so legendary recently announced that their Kong versus Godzilla movie will in fact have a definite victor and I'm just going to be real honest with you guys and just mm-hmm. come out and say it 
much like John Cena versus Rob Van Dam at ECW One Night Stand in 2006, if King Kong wins, we riot. <laughs> okay? okay? As a kid, nothing fucking pissed me off more than watching King Kong versus Godzilla and watching that old white guy say, Kong is a thinking animal. <laughs> His brain is considerably larger. His King Kong's brain, being an ape, is the size of Andre the Giant, whereas Godzilla's brain is the size of this small marble. Yeah. What I, I kind of people is Godzilla's a fucking idiot and King Kong is a smart ass beast. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait a fucking second. Godzilla can shoot fucking fire and has a massive tail and he's cool. And King Kong is a fucking idiot who eats power lines. <laughs> Nothing pissed me off more than having um, uh, Godzilla, number one, having Godzilla be so dissed like that. See, but, see, but uh, I still had it. King Kong is still my boy. I, I you know. <laughs> So I, I was I was happy with the ending. I'm not done yet. You told me to wait. Oh, like I like King Kong and I like all the King Kong movies and I like how Kong Skull Island successfully broke away from a lot of King Kong movie tropes in the yeah. sense that a lot of the characters that I that were in the film actually survived. Mm -hmm. But um God damn it, I was so pissed off when that fucking old ass scientist is. Uh, Godzilla is uh, not a thinking creature. He is a dumbass. He has yeah. sheer brute strength. I, I, whereas, I didn't like them running down Godzilla, no. Whereas Kong is a thinking animal. His brain is considerably larger. I'm like, no, fuck you. <laughs> so here are some stats. King Kong vs. Godzilla, a 1962 movie by Toho Studios, the house that Godzilla built. This film is in the record books as the first film to feature Asians in blackface that allow kids to have cigarettes. Yes. That is, that is a uh, first, I believe, in Japanese cinema. <laughs> and when you first saw that, being a kid, what is the only conclusion that you can really draw? Apparently, there are no black people in Japan. Yes. Yes. And, that, and yes, that not exactly. only that, but they also do not have access to black people in Japan. Yeah. So we'll just take a bunch of Japanese people and paint them. Yeah. Unless you're hot. Yeah. Skeeto! Two <laughs> transistors. I like the I like the two I like the two leads in this very much. Yeah. There's the more serious guy and then there's kind of the funnier guy. They're the Abbott and Costello of Godzilla films, basically. Oh yes, they most certainly are. But I have a problem with the wire. The wire? Yeah. You mean the legendary uh, TV show about cops? No, The Wire in this film. Oh, The Wire in this film. The uh, Stronger Than oh. Steel. Oh, yes. Stop it. You're not Tarzan. <laughs> yeah. Because if I was to wrap you up in wires and lift you, how long do you think it would be before that wire just slashed your limbs off. Oh, I see what you're getting at there. So they would yeah. have delivered an armless, legless Kong to Godzilla. To fight. Yeah, and, and then, and then it turns into what Johnny get your Kong. Yes, basically, <laughs> we've come up with a great, a great movie mashup. Yes. That's wonderful. 
and she wants back in her seat. And she is a she is a, a, a she is a endless pit. Eleanor is eating so much. I'm pretty sure, like, at first, it's like, oh, maybe she's, maybe she has, like, a tapeworm. But no, maybe a tapeworm has Eleanor inside of her. Yes. Is now how I'm looking at this baby. She's just eating and eating and eating. So Toho Studios was celebrating their 30th anniversary. And, okay, we need a big spectacle of a movie to celebrate. Mm -hmm. So as it happens, all the way in America at this time, the original animator of King Kong, the guy who did the stop motion and all of that, his name was What You Talking About, Willis O'Brien. Yeah. He had an idea for a movie, King Kong versus Frankenstein, where Frankenstein's monster grows to kaiju proportions. See, Frankenstein grew to monstrous proportions because he gets his power from lightning. That yeah. was a holdover. Aha! Uh -huh. Very nice. Yeah, that was a holdover from from the original. Because okay. that that would have that would have worked better in Frankenstein Conquers the World. Yeah, yeah. So, anywho, um, oh, thank you, honey. So, a movie producer by the name of John Beck gets a hold of this uh, movie what's the word where you've just written a, a treatment Yes, he gets a hold of this Willis O'Brien treatment for King Kong versus Frankenstein and says hey <clears throat> thanks for this treatment idea I'm going to go shop this around Willis O'Brien but don't worry we'll give you credit just kidding I'm not going to give him credit <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Willis O'Brien and I have a totally original movie idea. It's called King Kong vs. Frankenstein. <laughs> Anywho, yada yada yada, Toho got the idea and they eventually turned it into King Kong vs. Godzilla. Because apparently, Toho had always dreamed of making a King Kong movie. Yes. And they ended up making two King Kong movies. Interesting side note, they originally were going to make three King Kong movies. But at the last second, they said, hey, King Kong versus Godzilla, that was huge for us. That was massive. King Kong escapes? Not so much. Are we working on a third King Kong movie? Crap. No one's going to watch that. At the, come on, guys. Change it to Godzilla at the last second. Change it to Godzilla. Change it to Godzilla. <laughs> Which is why there is one Godzilla movie that is in no way like the others. Which would be? Godzilla versus the sea monster. Number one, Godzilla is a sea monster. Yes. Number two... Godzilla is found sleeping inside of a mountain in the jungle. Number oh. three, and this is the big kicker, Godzilla falls in love with a native girl. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm remembering that. That, that. Was that the one where it was kind of like a lobster, the sea monster? Yeah. 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 I, I have not seen that one very much. Yeah, that was a King Kong movie that they changed to Godzilla at the last second. Nice. But you can tell if you know that and you watch the film, they're like, OK, yeah, no, I can understand that because this is a bit of an odd film. Yeah. It doesn't 100 percent fit into the Godzilla world. It's it's a strange one. Yeah. So Toho makes King Kong versus Godzilla and. It was such a big hit. Then even now in our modern day, they made uh, Shin Godzilla. They made Godzilla Final Wars, uh, Legendary Pictures Godzilla, even that one where Godzilla died. Still, with all of those movies, King Kong versus Godzilla. In Japan, they often don't discuss box office grosses. They discuss 
um, the amount of people who watched it. Oh, okay. It's not how much money the movie made. It's this many people went to see the film. So King Kong versus Godzilla is still to this day the most attended Godzilla movie of all time. Nice. Nice. Interesting. With all I, of the I, other I, Godzilla movies that yeah. have been made. Yeah. In Japan, more people went to go see King Kong versus Godzilla than any other Godzilla movie ever. And that's not something you can adjust for inflation. No, that is literal just butts in seats. More people saw King Kong than any other God- King Kong versus Godzilla than any other Godzilla movie, and that is amazing to me. Yeah, I would be interested to see the numbers for the uh, eventual legendary reboot of this film in 2020. Mm-hmm. Something I am looking forward to. Hell yeah! And I but also, and I don't know who to bet on. It's got to be Godzilla. It's got to be legendary pictures has to know how people like me feel about King Kong winning. <laughs> you know, they want to make this movie something different. And the best way they can do that is by having Godzilla win. My money is on Godzilla here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, I got a lot of years to think about this. Yeah. Yeah. The most important part of King Kong versus Godzilla despite the amazement of an Asian woman named Tammy yes, and an Asian man named Mr. Taco. <laughs> Seriously, there is an Asian man named Mr. Taco. We all need to be talking about this more. <laughs> this is important. It is. The most important part of 1962's King Kong vs. Godzilla is the fact that this film set a tone. Yes. Because, again, remember, this is only the third Godzilla movie ever, and the last two were uh, yeah, dark. I have the, I, yeah, I'm having a hard time believing that. Yeah, I believe yeah. you, but yeah. it the seems last two, later. Yeah. No, but the last two Godzilla films were dark and brooding and so serious. Just why so serious? <laughs> this film, they're like, hey, it's Toho's 30th anniversary, and we've got this American idea for a film and this legendary American monster. Fuck it, let's have some fun with this. Let's make one that kids can actually go and see. Let's drop all this dark, brooding crap and just laugh. Stop it. You're well, not. Person. See, me personally, I insist that Gojira and Godzilla are, are not the same creature. Yes. They are not the same creature. They are not the same movie. You know, if you want to see the first the first Godzilla movie, then you have to watch the one with Raymond Burr. Yeah. If you want to watch a good movie, you watch Gojira. Yeah. But this film's jokey, lighthearted tone yes. attached itself to Godzilla, and it stayed with Godzilla through all of the Showa series. It was this film that made people say, oh, wait a second. For the last two Godzilla movies, we treated them as serious art films. You mean we can have fun with monster movies? Oh, crap. Let's have some fun with this. Yeah. Let's make the next one uh, with these tiny midget uh, fairy girls who sing songs together. Mm-hmm. And uh, a, a giant moth monster. Yeah, let's just have fun. <laughs> and this, See, I this just don't find it started. I just don't find Mothra threatening. Oh hell, hell! It's no. a moth. Yeah, rub it, rub the powder off its wings. <laughs> yeah, he's done. <laughs> now Rodan is different because he's so super fast that like he's, you know, causing things to fall and yeah, yeah. Would have been Mothra better with a just... ray weapon. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Mothra can just. Mothra can be defeated if you just, you know, all Japan needs to do is build a giant bug zapper. Yes. 
Yeah. And then that's it. You've defeated Mothra. Congratulations. <laughs> the hard part about discussing King Kong versus Godzilla is the topic of the Japanese slash American version of this film. Because this was back in the day when Americans still thought, wait a second. Wait a second. We can't just release a Japanese film right. in America. People won't see that. We have to add white people. <laughs> so John Beck, the producer who literally stole Willis O'Brien's King Kong versus Frankenstein idea and got it made as his own film and Willis O'Brien never got credit. So John Beck, the asshat, got the original Japanese version which has never truly officially seen the light of day in America. Really? He got the Japanese version and he's like, okay, Americans won't like this. We need to cut the shit out of this. We'll cut out all of these scenes. We'll move others around. We'll change the entire order of events. And now let's add some white people in. Mm -hmm. Including American news reporter, Eric Carter. Eleanor, what, baby? You're fine. Do you want me to get her out? Oh, God damn it. Okay. I'm going to try and podcast while wiping down a baby. Okay. This, this might be the first time in the history of podcasting. <laughs> the baby was wiped down because of her mess while also continuing to podcast. Yes. Yeah, so this Willis O'Brien character, he just destroyed this movie. And the Japanese version, although, you know, silly and lighthearted and fun, is still a completely different film than the American film. When Legendary Pictures released their Godzilla reboot, the one thing that I hoped was, oh, please, for the love of God, have Universal Pictures finally release the Japanese version of King Kong vs. Godzilla in America. You know, we're... Put it on a Blu-ray DVD for oh, fourteen yeah. fifty-five. That'll take you what five seconds to make. I mean, for the love of God, because I have never been able to find or see the Japanese version of King Kong versus Godzilla in America. It's just difficult to find. Mm -hmm. You know, I could find it without subtitles. Yeah, that's not going to help. That's not. Yeah, that's not going to help me out. So hopefully when when Legendary Pictures finally gets around to making their remake, that finally maybe I can actually watch the Japanese version of King Kong vs. Godzilla for once. No, that's my food. No, stay away. That's mine. I get food too. Daddies also eat. Yeah, no, this is my food. Nice try. <laughs> so... So John Beck also got Universal... Uh, Universal released it in America, and through Universal, John Beck got access to the entire Universal Pictures cheesy music library. Okay. Which is why at times in this film, King Kong vs. Godzilla has music from both Frankenstein meets the Wolfman and the creature from the Black Lagoon, yeah. instead of legendary Godzilla composer Akira Ifukubi. <laughs> He's out of a job yeah. because Americans. Yeah. Interesting side note, Godzilla uh, Toho uh, in eventually reused the King Kong suit for a monster in their Japanese sci-fi show Ultra Q, which eventually gave birth to their very hit character Ultraman, which was homework previously on the podcast because everything is connected to this show. Everything is. Yeah. Eleanor! It's okay. Deep breath. I was going to say count to ten, but she can't count. I, I know what she's so angry about. What's, what's she so angry about? Because Rory got back with Logan Huntsberger. Fucking Logan. What a shitty fucking guy. Uh -huh. God damn it. Eleanor can sense that. I have never once liked the goddamn Life and Death Brigade. 
It's like, oh, we're the white privilege gang. Yes. We go around and show off our white privilege to everyone. Mm Mm-hmm. So, back to the monster verse. We just had Kong Skull Island, which is a damn good movie. And Legendary Pictures Godzilla is seen as a success. And Kong Skull Island made about $50 million more than that Godzilla film. So, technically, uh, vicariously, that means that Kong Skull Island was a success as well. Next is... Godzilla 2 Electric Boogaloo that's coming out in 2019 two years away and it will feature so many characters Godzilla Rodan Mothra King Ghidorah Space Ghost Kaiju B. Arthur yes. Waldo and of course everyone's favorite monster Mecha David Spade yes a giant robotic David Spade who's still <laughs> talking about his a small one-time friendship with a dead comedian. <laughs> decades and decades later. Oh, hey, David Spade. Nice. Now let's talk about Chris Farley. Eventually, mm-hmm. that's got to really piss you off, you know? Yeah. Yes, let me continue to talk about my dead, talented friend. Mwah. But you you did leave out my favorite monster. What's your favorite monster? Godzuki. Godzuki. Yeah. Yes, very much so. How how and how can Godzuki. they How can they create yeah. this universe without Godzuki? I'm sure we'll get there. <laughs> so then it, they're coming fast and furious too because 2019 is Godzilla 2 and the year after that May 2020 Godzilla versus Kong a big budget Hollywood gritty remake of King Kong versus Godzilla I just hope to god that they are true to the original and put in an Asian man named Taco Yes. Can we get on that seriously? Does anyone have George Takei's email address? <laughs> we need to get George Takei or uh, whoever it was that played Sulu uh, in the reboots. Yes. If we can't get if we can't get Takei, then we'll get that guy. Anyway, get somebody on the phone now. Exactly. Yeah. So that's all I got. You got anything? Um, that's about it. I, I was mostly concerned about the razor wire cutting through this gigantic ape. <laughs> Johnny Get Your Johnny Get Your yeah. Kong is going to be a great film. Yeah, he, he'll just be trying to communicate by shaking his head up and down. Yeah, and doing more Morse code. Yeah, while uh, Metallica music plays. It's a, it's a fun movie. It's a fun movie. Everybody needs to see King Kong versus Godzilla a lot. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's so for I next think. week, so for next week, there are two movies that have recently come out and um we got to do one or the other. And so I figure we are in eventually going to be doing these films, so I figure let's just put these two big in eventual episodes out right in front of us on the table, and let's just get one of them out of the way now. So I leave the choice up to you, uh, little little bunny blue, come blow your horn. Okay. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two or The Mummy. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Thank fucking God. I was worried you were going to say the mummy. <laughs> I don't want I don't want Tom Cruise running yet. I'll get there. Yeah. Just not there yet. The the, the I, I am I am so disappointed by the trailer to the mummy that I can just completely hate it just on those grounds alone. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I'm. I was so excited about the Universal Classic Monster Cinematic Universe, and then the Mummy came out, and it's yeah. like, oh, is this really? This is this is it. And Dracula came out just before it. it well, not just before it, but a while before it. And it's it's not exactly the part of the dark universe, but it it just pissed everybody off. I mean, it was going to be until everybody watched it and said, this sucks. And they were like, no, no, that's not a part of it. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. We totally didn't mean, what? No, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. And then they made The Mummy, and it sucks, too. Yeah. <laughs> So and, and even next, though it has nothing to do with the dark universe, I blame I Frankenstein as well. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. I totally agree with that. <clears throat> so next week, uh, we're doing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Um, it's either on the drive already or it will be tomorrow. Either way. Okay. Thank you. Just keep an eye out there. Also, starting next week, we will slowly but surely start celebrating the almost three-year anniversary of this podcast. That is correct. Um, uh, notes from the bookstore. We're going to be talking about buying your way onto the New York Times bestseller list, which is an actual thing that happens all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we are going to be getting our inner girls on with the Netflix original anime Glitter Force. I'm so excited. Bella is like um, exploding. She is chomping <laughs> at the bit to use Oklahoma parlance. Yeah. She is chomping at the bit to be able to talk about Glitter Force. And she watches it all the time. And I'm like, why are you watching this all the time? And she's so my daughter because she says, I hate this show and it sucks and I love it. Nice. Okay. And I'm like, God, like that, that is so looking into a mirror right there, you know? <laughs> and she watches it so much and I'm like, okay, well, if you hate, love this show so much, I guess for the first time ever, I'll pay attention and oh my God, my eyes are burning. <laughs> oh my God, this is horrible. We must discuss this on the podcast. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's a horrible, wonderful, horrible, horrible show. And I can't wait to talk about it. Okay. I will prepare myself. Yeah. No, it's amazing. There are so many uh, Netflix originals that they're surprisingly not shouting in your ear about. Yes. Yeah. So that's next week. You know what? What? Looking back, looking, taking a, a, a serious look back, I must say, um, I think this may have been a pretty good podcast. This has been a damn good podcast. I, I concur. Yes. <laughs>